Hello, my name is Dwayne Robinson. I'm a Principal Program Manager for Microsoft, and I'm going to walk you through the new Boost Conversations using GPT feature. With this, you can click and create a new bot. And in this case, I'm going to create just a Wikipedia example bot or test bot. And all I need to do here is add wikipedia.org. This is going to give me the ability to go over the corpus of the Wikipedia website and bring those answers into my bot experience without the necessary uh, overhead of writing topics. So as my bot gets created, the first thing we want to do is we'll want to go and take a look at some of the settings here just to show you how this is working. So by creating this and putting that information in, you'll see that I've boosted my conversation with wikipedia.org. And you'll see that it's got options here to see how, how much you want the filtering to be done if things aren't there. Now we'll go ahead and turn off all the lesson scenarios. So that, that way we don't get caught in any of that. And notice that the only thing we have left is the other uh, out of the box ones. So I'm going to ask it now, who is Bill Gates? And it will return a response with the information as well as a link to where it got this from. We're going to also ask, how tall is the Empire State Building? And you'll see that it will return back the response again with a summarization and a reference link. And then lastly, we're going to try one more scenario. Tell me about World War II. And you'll see it came back with information. Notice that none of this is actually inside of the bot itself. I'll give it one last uh, try here with something different. Who is the band Creed? Big fan of them. So let's see what it comes back with. And you'll see here that it comes back with information about the band Creed that came from Wikipedia. Now let's flip over and let's make a bot where we change it to point to Microsoft.com just to show the breadth of what you can do. And you can see that it will change how the bot will respond. You can see, can my computer run Windows 11? And again, what it's going to return back is a succinct answer with a reference link. You'll also see that I can ask it how to open a support ticket. And when I do this, it'll come back again with this information. But this is a demonstration now of if I ask it that same question about the band Creed and who they are, because Microsoft.com doesn't offer any information about the band Creed, you'll see that it does not actually respond to this question. Now, how do we see this kind of being applied long term? What we're really looking at is that now topics will not only be authored, but or you have things that you would want to script responses to that you do like in custom question answering or creating just a one response topic. We also see that now we can add in generated responses and then also even be able to handle things that aren't handled through all of these different scenarios can easily be handed down to an escalation or offloaded to a live agent. So it's important to understand that what we want to make sure is that people don't misrepresent that generated answers will always be the response. It is very common that you will want to make sure that you author great responses or great experiences that you want and to have within your control. You don't want to be answering questions about what is the best surface machine just from a generated response. That's probably more of a marketing controlled response. And that's an example of a scripted response. But if you go into something like, I want to build the ability to purchase a surface, you might not want to do that um, as well as a generated response. And that's more an example of how you use the new unified authoring canvas to build something really um, more in depth for your customer. With that, I hope you enjoyed the demo and thank you so much. Please stay tuned and we will continue to have more demos coming.